So good afternoon, everybody. What a terrific crowd we have here on this beautiful day. I am Mary McGuire, Director of Public and Legislative Affairs at AAA Northeast, and I am so pleased to welcome all of you, Senator Brady, Representative Cronin, Representatives Jerry Cassidy and Michelle Dubois, Mayor Carpenter, I'm not sure if he's here yet, uh, Senator Director <laughs> Donna Francis. <laughs> Hi, Mayor. <laughs> I'm in trouble already and I just started. <laughs> Center Director Donna Francis, YMCA board members, and AAA friends and colleagues. We welcome you here to the Old Colony YMCA Child Care Center. Uh, by the way, before we get started, I do have some good news for all of you. This is actually nap time for the kids right now, so after we're done with the speaking program in about 15 minutes, we all get to use the playground. So you guys can have it all to yourselves and the kids will never know. But in all seriousness, it's really appropriate that we are here in the playground today because for people everywhere, we all know there's nothing more important than the safety and security of the children in our lives, whether it's a son or a daughter, a niece or a nephew, a grandchild, a friend or a neighbor. And today, on a very dark and difficult day for this country, it feels really good to be making an effort to enhance the safety of all of our children. And that's really what these rear-facing car seat bills are all about. House Bill 1243, sponsored by Chairwoman Claire Cronin, and Senate Bill 1903, sponsored by Chairman Mike Brady, would close the existing gap in Massachusetts law to ensure that our little ones, our most precious cargo, are being transported in their car seats in the safest way possible. And that safest way, according to research by the American Academy of Pediatrics and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, is to keep toddlers rear-facing in a child passenger safety seat at least until age two. Massachusetts law does address booster seat requirements, but the law sets no guidelines for the safest use of child passenger safety seats and toddlers, and many parents believe it's safe to turn their children rear-facing when they turn one, but that is not the case. In fact, as you'll see clearly in the demonstration, our AAA Senior Traffic Safety Manager, John Paul, will do for us here in just a few minutes, keeping children rear-facing until age two offers far better crash protection for our little ones. Children in the second year of life are far less likely to be injured when they sit rear-facing because rear-facing restraints distribute the force of the crash across the head, neck, and spinal column, as opposed to concentrating force solely on the neck which can result in a severe permanent head or brain injury. None of us wants that to happen, and that's why we at AAA so much appreciate the great support we've had on this issue from our bill sponsors, Chairs Claire Cronin and Mike Brady. <laughs> Senator Michael Brady is serving his second Senate term representing the second Plymouth and Bristol district after serving more than three years in the House. He is Senate Chair for the Joint Committee on Revenue and Vice Chair of the Joint Committee on Telecommunications, Utilities, and Energy. He has served on the Brockton School Committee and City Council. He's a proud graduate of Brockton High. Please welcome Senator Mike Brady. Thank you. And I, uh, I'm honored to be here at the Old Colony Wine. I want to thank the Y and AAA for having us host this event. This is very important legislation, Senate Bill 1903, and a parent's number one priority is to keep their children safe, especially while traveling in a vehicle. And this is a bill that's going to help keep children safe. It requires children under two years old to be placed in rear-facing car seats, and also children under 30 pounds, who, of course, I can't qualify for that. So. But on a very serious note, the legislation helps to protect children, and uh, we know anything we can do to protect children in, in, in vehicles, especially with the way people drive today, is the number one priority for all of us. So I'm honored to be here, honored to follow this legislation. And we are noted as a city of champions of Brockton because we work together. And I'm glad to have my fellow colleagues, uh, Chairwoman Claire Cronin, who filed this bill in the House, and I know it was helped also by Representative Jerry Cassidy. So, and the mayor is here as well. I want to thank all the work that the mayor has done. But uh, we work very well together in the city of Brockton. It's very important that we work to get this legislation passed, and I'm honored to be here. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your support, Mr. Chairman. 
Representative Claire Cronin represents the 11th Plymouth District, which includes Brockton and Easton, and is House Chair of the Joint Committee on the Judiciary. She is a member of the Manufacturing Caucus, the Tech Hub Caucus, and the Gateway Cities Caucus. Rep. Cronin is an attorney and a mother of two, so she's had plenty of experience with child passenger safety seats all on her own. Please welcome Representative Claire Cronin. Thanks. It's my great pleasure to be here uh, with my Senate colleague, Senator Michael Brady, and my House colleague, Representative Jerry Cassidy. Uh, whenever we do anything at the State House, you can never do it alone. So I was particularly pleased that AAA reached out to Senator Brady and myself to work together on this. Uh, we always work as a team, and as our Brockton delegation, we do as well. We also have Representative Michelle Dubois, who is a co-sponsor of the Senate bill. So what better place is there to promote a bill that promotes health and safety for our children than the old Colony Y, which as its mission does that every day. So I'm particularly happy to join here at the Old Colony Y, and I specifically want to thank the folks at uh, AAA. Uh, they have a mission. Their mission is to keep children safe, families safe. They do it so well every day. I'm very, very happy to be a part of what I think is a very, very important cause. There are nine states in the country that already have this rear-facing legislation, and let's hope that Massachusetts is number 10. So with your support, let's make it happen. Thanks. We love hearing that, Madam Chair. Thank you so much for your support. I want to single out Donna Francis, who's our gracious host today. Donna, where are you? Back in the corner. Wave. She has been senior director here at the center for four years now. The center cares for almost 150 children, infants to school age, and provides an invaluable community service to area families. Donna, we thank you for lending us your playground and your center today. And we now welcome YMCA President and CEO, Vincent Martirano, to the podium to speak for the center. Welcome, Vinny. Thank you, and um, you know, I was reflecting on the events of this morning and at the same time, I was reminded when I came in by uh, Kim Moran and our staff who was responsible for uh, all of our uh, child care uh, association-wide that this particular center was opened, I've forgotten, on September 11th of 2001. And I think the reason I share that with you is that um, it is on days of particular importance when we get to reflect on some of the important priorities that we are challenged with as a society and uh, as a community. So when we think about protecting kids, you know, there is no higher calling than I think all of us have as individuals, um, as a community, as organizations, and this is an area that I know that our elected officials, uh, both local with our our uh, mayor, Mayor Carpenter, and, and then of course our three elected officials who each, you know, Jerry, Mike, and uh, Claire have been long-standing supporters of our Y in so many ways that I could continue to talk forever. But from the perspective of child care protecting kids, uh, we are very, very supportive of uh, this effort. I will tell you that uh, the Old Colony YMCA is the largest provider of child care in southeastern Massachusetts. Under our care every day, we have approximately 48 sites and about 2,200 kids enrolled from pre uh, infants. And I should say, by the way, my little granddaughter right over there, who will be uh, joining this center in just uh, a few weeks now. She's uh, seven weeks out. This will be the second child that I've had, uh, will have had in, in this particular uh, center. But I, I think the point is that in terms of having safety considerations for kids, it, it really is an absolute important. And quite frankly, I, I uh, really congratulate uh, Senator, you know, Mike, you are just uh, uh, an outstanding leader in, in this area. And Claire, what, what can I say? This is a no-brainer, folks, to provide uh, safety and extended uh, safety considerations for kids during their very young developing lives. 
is, is something that is mandated that we do. And uh, we are completely behind this effort and uh, very much supportive of the effort. That my understanding is that um, our friends at uh, AAA are going to be providing us a check today. And that check will essentially be used to provide families uh, in, uh, that cannot afford uh, the appropriate car seats and so forth. We will be able to uh, make sure that every family under our care uh, is able to be provided such. So thank you so, so very much. And thanks all of you for being here today with us. Uh, deeply appreciated and uh, happy to join the cause for this important legislation. Thank you so much, Mr. Martirano. What's your grand granddaughter's name? Eloise. Welcome, Eloise. I think Eloise is also asleep. <laughs> but anyway, we're glad to have Eloise here. So to get a clearer picture of what we're talking about, to give you a visual, we're joined now by our AAA Northeast Senior Manager of Traffic Safety, John Paul. John, by the way, is a native of Brockton. Uh, lives now in Abington. His mother lived here in Brockton for many years. He is a certified child passenger safety technician and instructor, and he has installed many a car seat in his uh, long career at AAA, which now spans, I think, almost 33 years, John, right? Almost. Almost. <laughs> so he joins us now with a demonstration of why this rear-facing bill, these bills are so important. And, um... You know, Mary pretty much covered it in her opening remarks, but kids rear-facing are just that much safer, and uh, it's really, all the studies have shown, uh, some studies have shown up to five times safer if kids stay rear-facing, other studies have shown 75% safer. Um, I never had kids, but our nieces rear-facing until at least two, if not older, just because it is so important. And you think about what happens in the event of a crash. When they're forward-facing, it's really just the harness straps that hold the child in place. When they're rear-facing, the idea is the seat works against the back of the, the car seat, and it actually cocoons the child, and it's the shell that really does all the work, and that's what makes kids safer. Some parents will say things like, well, my, my kids don't like to be rear-facing, they like being forward-facing. Really, it's not the kids, it's the parents. And the parents don't know any, the parents think that, oh, I can see them, they're more comfortable. The kids don't care. The kids, it's all, in the, it's all in the parents' head that want to turn the kids around. And I don't know it, how many child pastor safety events I've been in and uh, gone to, and there'll be somebody with a year-old, year-and-a-half-old child that comes up, and they're in a rear-facing seat. And I'll look at them and say, I bet you want me to turn your child around, right? And they'll say, yeah. And I'll go, I don't want to do it. What I'd rather do is take the seat out, make sure it's installed properly, and explain to you why they should be rear-facing until at least two. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I did a child pasture safety uh, seat installation in a parking lot, and the woman was from Brazil. And she looked at me and said, oh, I want to make sure my child's rear-facing. And I said, how come? She said, I don't know what it is about the United States. Everybody wants to turn their kids around. Where I come from, we keep them rear-facing until they literally outgrow the seat. And that's the right example to have. Keep your kids rear-facing until at least two. They'll be safer. They'll be a lot safer because of it. Thank you. Thank you, John. We appreciate that demonstration. And finally this afternoon, it's my real pleasure to welcome Lloyd Albert, our Senior Vice President of Public and Government Affairs at AAA Northeast, to the podium to present the check to the center and to President Vinnie Monerato. Thank you very much, Mary. On the way up here a while ago, I was listening to these um, it, these, uh, what do you call it, these uh, first-person accounts of what happened in Las Vegas last night, the carnage there, and I'm reminded about the value of a human life. I mean, how do you place a value on it? So we're here today talking about the value of a, ch of a child's life, of an infant's life. And what we're saying, and John has said it, and Mary said it, and we've heard it from others as well, that infants are safer in a car seat, staying rear-facing until two. So up until about 2011, the American Academy of Pediatrics said, keep them in the back, you know, rear facing until one. They changed their guidance in 2011, and I think smart people, researchers and others, listened. And what's happening is that state by state, we're taking this up legislatively and trying to make a difference here. So very exciting, and I can't even thank enough our two 
chairs who are trying to move this legislature legislation forward this fall in the legislature. Both uh, Chairman Brady and Chairman Cronin, I can't, no, another round of applause for them, please. <clears throat> so the bill passes, and when the bill passes, uh, parents don't have to go out and buy a new car seat. Is that right, John? That's right. No, nece no cost necessary, no burden on families, but they will be uh, educated to the fact that they're safer until two, and people will simply leave their child rear facing for one more year. So is it a controversial bill? I, don't, I really don't think so, but it makes an enormous difference in the lives of families. So thank you, all of you here, for showing an interest in this legislation today. And it is AAA's pleasure to be working along with all of the stakeholders on this bill and to make a presentation today that will provide $2,500 to the Y to purchase car seats for families who may not be able to afford them at this time. So my, my pleasure today to present this check to you uh, on behalf of AAA. Uh, I know it will be very well used and appreciated by families who can use it. Absolutely. So thank you all again for being here. Appreciate it. So thank you very much. That concludes our program. I do have a couple of acknowledgments to some of the terrific folks who helped us put this event together. Mark Lindy from Southeast Regional School Committee, thanks for being here today. Really appreciate it. And also Paul Schreiber, who's a local pediatrician from Easton, who sits on our uh, Traffic Safety Coalition. Uh, committee in Massachusetts, so he's kind enough to be here today as well. Uh, also want to thank uh, Kenneth Flyer, Kim Moran, and Aaron Spaulding, and Joyce Dwyer from the YMCA staff, uh, Aldi Geralmo from Senator Mike Brady's office, Amelia Robello from Claire Cronin's office, uh, we have Bridget Plough from Jerry Cassidy's office, so thank you all for your help in making this event happen. And uh, let's work together now to make the children of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts safer on our roadways. Thank you all so much for being here.